Dixon to ride. All right, so I'm just putting these, uh, getting everything ready to uh, drop the engine down onto the motor mounts. And I noticed this before. Not sure if you can see that. Well, the head of this bolt down here, this case bolt was actually riding on that. So uh, what I've done before is just take a piece. This is actually a, a just a piece from a, an old dirt bike, a heavy duty rear dirt bike tire. I mean, these things are a good eighth inch thick. So I keep that stuff around and then you can use old radiator hose as well. But this stuff is good enough. It's rubber, it'll hold up. And then uh, I'll usually just move this over just slightly to where I'll get a fresh spot to where it was rubbing. And then I'll put this over there. And if it's real bad, just cut it off. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. It doesn't have to be anything spectacular. It's all about function, people. Let's take some zip ties. I usually do three. And that way it's on there and it's got something protecting it. It's got actually a double layer because you got the old plastic piece on there still, so. Just like that. It just adds a little extra bit of insurance. So it did look like it was starting to cut into the actual hose itself already. So you stick that under there and should be good to go. Alright so I'm getting I got the uh, engine set where it's supposed to go and uh, obviously the boots aren't on there. I found the easiest way to put these boots on is just to get the thing in place and then just push them on from behind here. Just like that. You gotta kinda pull up on them at first. And once again, this dog on shoulder, man. Let me get a screwdriver, it might be a little easier. Yeah, with my shoulder, I just can't get the same amount of torque and my thumb. Like, I sprained my thumb and it's just stinking. I can't, you know, crank up on things like I used to. Hopefully, I'll gain all that back over time. There we go. Just like that. So, they're in there good now. Looks like they're really... Yeah, they're on there, so that's good. Pop this thing off. Ready to put some fuel lines on. Plug in some plugs. Start putting these motor mounts in. Yeah, it cleaned up pretty good though. So, not gonna be able to see a whole lot while I'm doing this. It's just you know plugging everything in and then uh, as far as this taking this out you can see how it's got those tabs down in there you just have to crank back on this thing when you're pulling it out and it helps if it's warm so you know if you're if, if it's cold and you need to bang it out real quick get a get a hair dryer or a heat gun that way you don't bust this stuff because it does get brittle in the cold especially when it's older but it just pops right in there the little horn or whatever and then the rest of this just 
just slips back over and on top. Locks into these three little tabs in the front here. There's one, two, and three. And then there's just three little screws. One, two, three. And then the whole thing comes off. And then the lid just clips in. You gotta pull the lid up to where it's about here and then you can pop them up. And make sure those are warm too, because if they're not, those can those tend to break too. So just be careful there. All right, I'm gonna get back to it. All right, so I got all the wiring just about buttoned up. Tried to get everything as organized as possible. That's just, that could probably be tucked up in the thing there, but yeah, I missed one. But what I did is I separated everything to their um, respective sides and then zip tied everything up and out of the way and made sure, obviously, that's not going to be sitting against that. That's the output tube for the tank, which I am going to hook a 12 volt battery to and drain the fuel off into a bucket over there. But um, I like to not have worry. So I do little zip tying things to secure things to where they're snug and they're not going to, you know, do a lot of bouncing around or anything to rub bare spots. So yeah. I like to have stuff nice and out of the way. And last thing I got to put in there is the servo for the power cables, power valve cables. And then that's obviously got its one plug right there. And then little stuff like uh, this and the stator, I made sure to use my carbon carbon conductive grease. And I realize this stuff is for more of a a mechanical connection, but it helps either way, in my opinion. If it's conductive, then hey, it's gonna keep the connection uh, s protected from moisture and it's gonna be conductive, so it's gonna be good to go. Unlike your dielectric grease, which is a s insulating, non-conductive uh, moisture barrier. That's something you would wanna put on um, connections well, let me see here. Like you'd want to put it on a connection right at the base of all this. So once you get two connectors together, you would put it around this base here and then push it together. Like you'd smear a little bit in there. And then once you push the two pieces together, it would squish it out and make a moisture barrier around the whole thing. So for years they used... Uh, the dielectric grease on uh, you know actual light bulbs and connections and you know especially up in here they used it in here and yeah it lasts for a while but it does end up getting corroded and that's a lot of the times that's why these end up going uh, well I wouldn't say they're bad but that's why they end up losing their uh, function because there's just grime in there and you know it stops the contacts from making contact and doing what it's supposed to do so as you can see, I'm missing a thumb throttle here. I do have one in the box over there that I got from West Michigan Snowmobile, so I'll be putting that on. And uh, I have to solder up this right here. So I'm just gonna put a little, uh, I'll probably cut this up here a little bit and then uh, slide a sleeve on there and then I'll pop off the ends of the sheath and then put some solder on both of those and then solder them together and then put a little tiny bit of dielectric grease over that and then slip the sheath of the heat shrink over it and be done. And I'll be able to put this back. And then like I said, I, I'm going to, I haven't connected up a couple things here. One, which is the electric fuel pump. And obviously this goes to the key. And then this right here goes to the heat shield power supply. And then I have this here which goes up to the hand warmer and then I have another one up here which is going to go to the thumb warmer so that is it for up here and then I'll be able to put the console on there and yeah uh, after that I'll be able to uh, I'm going to put this hose on I just wanted to show you guys so it was out of the way uh, so this hose will go on next I have 
new OEM, uh, new old stock power cables in here, uh, power valve cables, because unfortunately, this guy right here, and it was working fine, but you know, I don't want to risk it. It could pop and then just run like crap. Why even deal with that, you know? So, but yeah. So that, the hose, APV servo, and then um, the recoil. Uh, obviously, I'm going to have to bolt this thing down, but I wanted to clean the clutches up first because they're, they're kind of nasty looking. So I'm going to pull these things apart and hit them in the uh, soda blaster, clean them up real nice, put them back together, and then I'm going to put them on and make sure my center to center is good. And if I got to pop this thing up and... Oh, uh, it looks like they're already... I think I wallowed these out a little bit already. So, I should be good to go. Um, we'll, uh, we'll see how everything goes, and hopefully I'll be uh, good to go once um, I put those clutches on there. And the center to center, I'll verify that. And then I'll bolt the engine down. Then I can put the exhaust on, pump the old fuel out, uh, put new fuel in, and then I'll probably give it a start after that make sure everything's running good and then the only thing i'll have to do after that i'm going I, is really i mean technically speaking just put the skid in and you could ride it obviously you got to put the skis back on i just took them off because they were kept tripping over them i was like get this crap out of here and so i do have nicer um uh, control arms and stuff so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the old spindles and put the new a arms on there i'm going to get these ratty looking um shocks rebuilt uh, by my shock guy and then put it all back together that way it's got a nice stable and uh comfortable front end for family but yeah it's moving right along <laughs> <laughs>